guys, Mr. Tolly. Getting started on this cross draw holster. So I'm going to bring you along. I am not going to show all the detail that goes into making this. I'll be cutting away and stuff, but you'll get the general idea. Maybe along the way we'll do another smaller holster. Um, when my basement flooded, I lost all my personal holsters, so I have to make a few for myself. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll get to that then. I have a cutout. Let's, let's turn you down here where my work is. I have a cutout, all one piece. This is the uh, 8 to 9 ounce thickness. This is the lining. I don't have this cutout exactly because I want to put it on. I'll get it all glued on and then I'll trim everything. So that'll come later. Um, first thing I need to do, flip it over, I need to put a pattern on here. Now, the way I'm going to do that, I probably could have gone with something a little bit bigger than this. I'm going to kind of find the spot that I want it. And I'm going to use a stylus. This is just, it's got a rounded point on it. So it's kind of like a ballpoint pen. I used to use a ballpoint pen. Uh, fine point works the best. I have others. I mean, these are tooling kind of stuff. These are different sizes. They have different ends on them. I don't use the other ends ballpoints mostly but we need to get it wet in case our leather just to kind of really make it pop a little more and I think it looks fantastic if I do say so myself wait till we get the dye on there she's really gonna pop so we're on to the next part uh, I do have to let this dry overnight before I can glue the uh, lining onto it so stay tuned. After the carving is all dried out, it looks beautiful. I surprised myself with it. <laughs> um, all the both sides of the leather have been put together. Um, you know, there's a little a little mark like this pen mark here. I'm gonna you'll never see it because I once I clean the leather, that'll come off. And most of it just will get taken off when it gets trimmed anyway. So, I'm going to have to really wet down the places that need to fold, which will be here and across here. Well, it's at really, it'll be at a 30 degree angle here. That's what regulation is. I figure we might as well do it by the regulations, right? But in here, I need to have a welt. So, what I did is I took, laid this side on, and I traced a mark along this way so that I get this. This is just it's scrap leather, and it's, it's what it's good for. I mean, it was a piece that was funky here, so I couldn't use it on anything, uh, and it needed to be lined because of the inside here was just so bad. Um, but I'll clean that up a little bit after I cut it out, and it's going to work great. So I need to go one thickness all the way down, but right here at the top where the trigger guard would go in, it's going to be three thicknesses, which gives you some challenges when you're uh, putting your holes in it, keeping everything straight. So I'll kind of show you how I get around that too. Um, but I'm going to get this cut out, get the other two pieces, you'll get a piece on top and a piece on the bottom, and I'll be back. Okay, now we'll get 
the rest of this weld figure out here. These are my two pieces that are going to want to go on either side of this weld. So we want to know which side they have to skive. If I set them on here like this, I want to skive it this side right down to nothing so it meets up with this piece of leather. So basically what I want to do is come from about right up here and just kind of angle it off. So to do that, we're going to use a skiver, but I want to know which side i got to skive down. So if I set them this way, and I put an X here, down on the bottom, and then an X on this side down on the bottom, I know which side to skive. And I want to go roughly about an inch and a quarter. Put a mark there and on this side. So we'll just skive this side down where the X is on each of these. This is not a lesson in skiving, but we'll try to start towards the bottom bit off there first and then gradually work back a little bit. So there we go down like that. We'll just move to the other one. And we're on our way. And we glue it all together. So I'll be back when I do that. Put contacts in that. Remember with contacts meant you have to do both sides. When you have a smooth side like this, you want to kind of score that up a little bit. I just I'm kind of doing an X pattern. Just to get the glue a little too. I just use a scratch all to do that. Now if you're worried about getting glue on your fingers, wear gloves or don't do this kind of work. <laughs> Oop. Now we'll give that a minute or two to dry. <clears throat> and before it's completely set up, I'm going to stick the two together. Keeping this inside part as close as I can to to even because that's the hardest part to work with. And keep in mind I do a few touches to my uh, holsters and welts and such. A lot of people don't do and aren't necessary. I do it because I think it adds to the look of it. Got the smooth side again. Let's do a little cross hatch on there again. Sometimes folks ask, why does it take so long to make a holster? When I do a, something like this weld, I pretty much need to let it dry overnight to get a good bond before I go on. 
and it's, it's not so much that I have to do that, it's because I do that. It's just a me thing. I'm just going to line up everything on the inside. And we'll do a little, you know, I went with the welt is three-eighths of an inch wide, and it'll probably wind up being a quarter inch by the time it's all done. So I'll take that off in the finishing process. Just kind of squeeze everything together good. I'm not going to clamp it. I don't think I need to. But there you go. Now your weld is thicker up there than it is down below. And that makes for a nice transition for your trigger guard to slide in. So we'll set that aside. And I'm going to move on to something else. Real quick, I just wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, wanted to show you what I do on the weld on the inside so even everything up here and I'll burnish all that <clears throat> but the top there has got a little curve to it and that is so that when your trigger guard goes past that it doesn't hang up it's just one of those little things uh, that I found makes a big difference in a holster so just real quick wanted to show you that how do I do that see you later